Coming up, Kendrick Johnson's family is found guilty in a Valdosta courtroom. And the bodies of a missing Georgia couple are identified. We'll have these stories and more. Your News Valdosta starts now. Welcome to News Right Outside. I'm Cassandra Massey. And I'm Noah Lani. Family members of a teenager who died at Lowndes County High School a few years ago were back in court yesterday. Kendra Johnson's parents, along with five other family members, were sentenced to 12 months in jail yesterday. The family members were found guilty of obstruction when blocking people from entering the Lowndes County Judicial Complex in April last year. Judge Mitchell of Thomasville suspended the sentence as long as they are not arrested within the next year. The Johnson's attorney stated after trial yesterday that the family is already considering appealing their sentences. Police announced Tuesday that, the, that they have identified the bodies of a missing Georgia couple, Bud and June Runyon. The couple disappeared on Thursday after responding to a Craigslist ad. Both bodies were found with gunshot wounds to the head. A suspect, Ronnie Towns, have been charged with murder and armed robbery. Towns turned himself into authorities on Monday when a warrant was put out for him giving false statements and attempt to commit theft by deception. A former Georgia prison inmate is dead today. Warren Lee Hill was executed by the state of Georgia on Tuesday after being sentenced to life in prison after killing his 18-year-old girlfriend in 1986. He was then sentenced to death after killing a fellow inmate. In 2000, three doctors testified at his trial and they were not that he was not intellectually disabled. Fifteen years later, after reviewing the case, those three doctors' new statements say that they believe he was actually intellectually disabled. The Valdosta Police Department responded, responded to the nine hundred block of Lakeside Drive yesterday in reference to a reported burglary. A passport, several gold coins, and loose change were reported as stolen. The resident also stated that his dog had sustained a cut above the right eye. There are no known suspects at this point. The city of Valdosta will soon resurface over two and a half miles of city streets using the funds provided by the Georgia Department of Transportation and the local maintenance and improvement grant. The use of these funds was approved by the mayor and council back in December. The street restorations will consist of curb and gutter repair, leveling, new asphalt, and other related work. Streets may be closed for a short duration during the day while under construction, but will open back up at the end of each workday. Do you have any extra canned goods lying around? If so, you can donate those to the second harvest of Vadausta. Ralph Randolph Powell and his son Raymond used these donated goods to help feed the needy on the front line of Azalea Church, City Church of God yesterday. Fewer participants than normal took part in the donations. Randolph said he usually had upward of 125 people, but only half of that yesterday. When we come back, we'll learn about new career opportunities for people interested in the health field. And later, how your child may still need a car seat to stay safe. Stay with us. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov.
Welcome back to News Valdosta. Valdosta State's Health Career Expo tonight may present some job some possible job opportunities for students and area residents. Are you pursuing a career in nursing or health professions? VSU's Office of Career Opportunities will be hosting a career expo tonight from 4 to 7. It will be held in the lobby of the Health Science and Business Administration Building. The expo will be hosted by many employees around the South Georgia and North Florida area. Current Vidalsta State students, as well as alumni, pursuing careers in athletic training, exercise, physiology, and nursing are invited to attend. The Vidalsta Lounge Chamber had its 103rd annual membership meeting this afternoon. The meeting consisted of over 300 business professionals within the Vidalsta Lounge County area discussed goals of this year and an overview of 2014. They welcomed 2015 Chairman of the Board, announced the A.L. Gerardin Award, and the Southwest Georgia Bank Business Plan competition winners. The commissioners are also considering a possible trash pickup alternative after being informed that a rate increase for pickup service will go in effect under the current provider, Advanced Disposal. Advanced Disposal says the rate increase is needed because the contract was too low as a result of the company, as a result the company was losing money. Lowndes County Chairman Bill Slaughter says no decision on a new contract that has been made. However, he says he has been in contact with another provider. The Lowndes County Commissioners voted for an anti-dog chain ordinance. Animal lovers sat on the dog, sat, said that dogs on chains do not have the proper access to food, water, or shelter. The new ordinance states that keeping dogs on chains can prevent them from properly socializing with animals as well as human beings, which can cause aggression within dogs. The Vidalsta Board of Education approved recommendations set by the District Superintendent, Superintendent Edward Roosh during this past Monday's board meeting. There was no discussion as to what these recommendations were during the opening session. However, they were discussed during the board's closing closed executive meeting. These recommendations have yet to be posted or spoken of as of Tuesday afternoon. You can make a difference in the life of a child. The Vadasa Lounge County Parks and Recreation Authority is looking for dedicated men and women to coach youth sports. The sports that are offered are football, baseball, softball, cheerleading, soccer, basketball, and volleyball. It doesn't matter if you love sports or you just want a little game of catch, there's a spot for you and every volunteer coach must pass a background check and receive a badge before he or she is allowed to coach. If you'd like to volunteer, visit the main office to fill out a volunteer application. Infants and toddlers are not the only passengers that should use car seats. Authorities say children should use car seats until around the age of eight. Captain Brian Boutwell of the Vidalsta Fire Department says there are people at the fire department who, can certif who are certified to check and install car seats. Child safety seats, when installed correctly, can reduce a fatal car injury by more than 50%. To learn more about these types of car seats and how they should be installed correctly, you can contact Vidalsta Fire Department. When we come back, we'll find out if these sunny days are here to stay, so stay with us.
love learning. I believe in service. I am full of passion. I embody sportsmanship. I trust in my resourcefulness. I like balance. That's why I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Division Two. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Now let's take a look at the weather with Kenny Murphy. Kenny, what's the forecast? Thanks, Noelani. Earlier this morning, we saw frost on the cars and frost on the ground. But as today went on, we saw temperatures in the low 60s, with our high being 64 degrees. It was nice and sunny today with a humidity of 52%. There was a 0% chance of rain predicted for today, and that's exactly what we got. Tonight, the temperature will drop down to a low of 45 degrees, so grab a blanket and stay nice and warm. Even though the temperature will drop, the humidity will rise to 85%. Sunset tonight will be at 6.06 .06 p.m. For tomorrow, we will see a slight decrease in temperature. We are expecting a high temperature of about 59 degrees, which is about the same as we have been for the last few days. You can expect to see sunny skies with the humidity being 59%. Even though it will be mostly sunny, there will be a 10% chance of rain tomorrow. The UV index scale reads 5 today. The index has been going up lately, and that is an indicator of clear skies. Those of you who burn easily should remember to take the right steps to prevent sunburn. Even if you don't burn easily, you should still, make the right, you should still need to make the right steps to make sure when you go outside you don't burn. We have good news on the pollen count for today. Our pollen is at 1.8, which is fairly low. Juniper is the predominant pollen for today. With the pollen count being low, you should have been able to go outside and enjoy the nice day. That's all I have for today, so back to you guys at the news desk. Thanks, Kenny. When we come back, Marissa Daniels will bring us more with our local sports, so stay with us. Thank you for calling your GED pep talk center. All right, now, are you ready for your GED pep talk? Being nervous is okay. It just shows that you're serious about getting your diploma. All right, listen, we all need a little nudge sometimes. I don't function without coffee in the morning, but it is going to take more than a double mochaccino to help you here. A lot of things are scary. Heck, I'm scared of clowns. No quiero oír. Danny, no lo puedo hacer. Quiero oír. Danny, lo voy a hacer. DMC, liking your pep talk style. Just keeping it real, Deb. Just keeping it real. <laughs> louder! Louder! I want me to get my GED! Come on! Get your hey, GED! Hey. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Welcome back. Now let's check in with Marissa Daniels for our local sports. Marissa. Thanks, Cassandra. Thanks, Cassandra. Well, tomorrow afternoon, you can catch the Georgia Christian Generals and Lady Generals basketball teams in Albany when they play Deerfield Windsor at 4 o'clock. This comes after Tuesday's night's contest when the Generals and Lady Generals dominated the GISA Region 3 double, double A matchups against the Highland Christian Eagles. The Lady Generals won their 13th victory with a score of 57 to 28. The Generals won their fourth game in a row with a score of 71 to 54. Jeremiah Beverly secured the win for the Generals by scoring 20 five points. Christian Weisenbaker also helped lead the team to victory with 13 rebounds and 12 points. 
look for two more important matchups Friday when the Lady Valiants and Valiants host Tarot Academy at home in the Eagle Sports Center. The girls game tips off at 6.30 p.m. with the boys game to follow. The Lady Valiants and the Valiants took on the Citizens Christian Academy Patriots at home in the Eagle Sports Center earlier this week. The Lady Valiants defeated the Patriots in a close 49-48 game. Meanwhile, the Valiants defeated the Patriots 60-49. We'll have to see if the two teams can stay on top. This Saturday, the Valdosta High School Wildcat basketball teams will be facing their biggest rival of the season, the Lions High School Vikings, in a home conference matchup. The Wildcats' record is currently 12-8, while the Vikings' current record is 7-13. Senior guard Tierra Phillips is projected to score big points in the game as she averages 10.7 points per game. The girls' game will promptly begin at 6 p.m. with the boys' game to follow. In a preseason poll, Valdosta State's baseball team has been selected to finish fourth in the Gulf South Conference this upcoming season. Hitter Bryant Heyman, shortstop Mike Reed, and third baseman Michael Gouch were chosen for the preseason All-Gulf South Conference team. Also, the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association released their preseason South Region poll and preseason All-Region teams naming Heyman as part of the All-Region first team and Reed as part of the second team. Heyman has been selected for the All-GSC team three seasons in a row and for the All-Region teams twice. Last season, he batted 3-3-1 with a conference leading 11 home runs. Reed was also selected for the All-Region team last year after batting 3-6-8 with 22 stolen bases and 53 home runs. And that's our sportcast for today. Now let's go back to the news desk. Thanks, Marissa. When we come back, we'll look at the special events coming up for the fathers and daughters. And we'll see about the national award given to Wiregrass Technical College. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Get your f out. Oh, yes, I am. You're not f in here. Yes, I am. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, you got Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. What will you find at Valdosta State University? Challenging academics. Innovative hands-on experience. Over 100 fields of study. Engagement in a vibrant community. Caring mentors and friends. Service and leadership opportunities. Championship athletics. The full university experience. At Valdosta State University. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Mark your calendars and start thinking of the perfect dress and suit to wear to the annual father and daughter dance. The dates for this event are Friday, February 6th and Saturday, February 7th. This will be hosted at the Rainwater Conference Center on Nor Norman Drive. There will be a first session from 6 to 8 p.m. and a second session from 9 to 11. The ticket cost is just $10 per person and are only sold online at www.fatherdaughterdance.com. Five gold medallion awards were given to Wiregrass Technical College's Office of Marketing and Public Relations recently. Lydia Hubert is the Director of Marketing and Public Relations at Wiregrass. She says the National Council for Marketing and Public Relations recognizes outstanding marketing and PR for community and technical colleges across the country. These national awards put the technical college among some of the best in the nation. The Annette Howe Turner Center for Performing Arts is presenting the Million Dollar Quartet. This award-winning Broadway musical was inspired by Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Jerry Lewis, and Carl Perkins. It will take place on Tuesday, February 3rd at Mathis Auditorium at 7.30 p.m. A pre-show dinner will begin at 6 o'clock p.m. and tickets are $16 per person. That's it for our program today. Thanks for watching News About Asta. I'm Noelani Matthews. And I'm Cassandra Massey. We'll see you next week.